NHL teammates for 13 seasons. Now back together as on-air teammates. You are listening to the Cass and Juice podcast. Hockey, life, and other stuff. Here are your hosts, Ryan Kessler and Kevin Bieksa. Welcome back, Kess and Juice podcast, episode seven. Coming at you, I'm Kevin Bieksa, your host, and my co-host, as always, believe it or not, his wife hasn't listened to one episode yet. It's Ryan Kessler. What is that all about? Yeah, how's it going, bud? Uh, I just asked her the other day, I'm like, hey, did you listen to new mics? Sounds good. She's like, I haven't listened to a single episode. What are you talking about? And I'm like, okay, next subject. Um, Let's move on here. You think if anybody would be entertained about you and me just talking about nonsense, it would be your wife, right? Who knows us best? Yeah, I think she thinks we're both idiots, though. So maybe that's why she doesn't listen. I don't know. I don't she, question her. She lit, I think I've known Andrea since she was a teenager, and I still at times don't know if she gets my sense of humor. Like We had that group text going last night, remember? And I text, can't wait to... Can't wait to go on a trip for Kessa's, you know, drunken mistake at an auction and pay for it. And she's like, oh. it wasn't a mistake. And I'm like, it's a joke. <laughs> well, that's, that's her. She, she thinks you're an asshole. So All right. I tend well, to agree with her sometimes. Oh, she, is, she is right 40% of the time. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that too much longer. Uh, what we are going to talk about today is, and I hate this word, but the media has kind of coined the phrase, the code. And I like kind of the game within the game. And obviously, there's, there's the Cassian to Chuck, Calgary, Edmonton rivalry. Uh, that whole thing has been just blowing up this week. And, you know, we both have our opinions. We played through it. We're two guys that walked the line. And I, but I think there's, we're two guys that never really violated, if you want to call it the code, which we're not going to call it the code. We're going to come up with a better word. But you and I played the game within the game, I think, well, right? Yeah, you know, I think I think fans understand there's a game within a game. Maybe they don't ex- understand exactly, but we're going to explain that later in the show. And then also, there was a good article out this week uh, in The Athletic for, by uh, Scott Crookchank, and it was about uh, Travis Hamanick in particular, but basically dental injuries in hockey and the role of the dentist has in getting you back on the ice as quick as possible. So fans don't really understand what actually happens. And you and I have had... If you look at us, you can't tell because we're models, but we've had several cuts to our face and, and teeth knocked out, right? Yeah, you got a flipper. I don't have a flipper, but basically all my teeth are uh, are fake. Um, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to get you back on the ice, and uh, we, we're going to talk about that later in the show too. Boy, is it's the worst, and it, it, we're going to showcase and maybe humble brag uh, how tough hockey players are and, and some of the stuff they go through because at the, bottom, at the end of the day, you just want to get back on the ice, especially if there's like a power play or something coming up. You're like, just <laughs> stop the bleeding and get me on the ice, right? So, and That's then so uh, true. power play, you're getting back on the ice. If you get shot in the face, you're going to take 15 minutes, but if you get a high stick and, and you're, you're leaking all over the place, you're for sure staying out there. But if you're in the penalty kill, you're like, ah, I should probably go to the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I should probably like go and uh, this is a little more serious. Maybe we'll go to the room. Uh, you missed we'll, a spot, Doc. You missed a spot right here. Extra <laughs> stitch. <laughs> and then you you watch The Bachelor. I've watched The Bachelor, but I haven't watched an episode or a season in, in years. So that's we're in the midst of it right now. And you got some strong feelings about that. Well, show, I don't know if it's strong. And let's let's. Uh, I don't watch The Bachelor. I haven't watched The Bachelor in probably a long time, but you know, the last you first two episodes, it. first two episodes I watched, and it wasn't by choice. I just, you know, in passing, sat on the couch, and that was what was on TV. And to be honest, I really enjoyed it. I think it's uh, it's straight chaos on TV. So somebody, you sat on the couch, and then the show just came on. So you turned on the TV, and the and the Bachelor was just on. You didn't have oh, to no, flip no. the channel. Backstory: My wife wants to have a uh, a bachelor night in the guest house with all her girlfriends. Who knows what that involves? I don't know. Maybe uh, who knows? Stripper, a stripper. Exactly. I was gonna say it, but you know, I I knew you you would because you're fucked with uh, that. Your Greek friend, your your Greek (laughs) buddy, with a nice body. Nikos, Nikos. (laughs) So, 
cheap it goes back to me being cheap again like like the theme of the fucking the podcast right now uh i don't have recording devices on my cable box over here so obviously they had to record it and watch it later so they watched it at home and and i i tuned in and and to be honest it makes me feel a lot better about my life when i watch that kind of stuff well that's probably why they do it for people like you to feel better <laughs> about it, right <laughs> And you know what? By coincidence, we have Zach Cassian joining us today and we're going to have a really good talk with him. I actually, we spoke, we spoke last week and I said, Hey, like come on the show, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I've said no to everybody else, but I love you and Cass. Well, I'll come Obviously. on. Obviously. And then I say, <laughs> I'm not taking credit for anything, but I say to him, Hey, do something interesting this week. Like maybe a Gordy Howe hat trick. <laughs> right. And then I'm watching and then two days later, this thing happens and it's been, so it's like, all your fault is what uh, you're saying. It's your fault. You told him to do something, something stupid, quote unquote, which I don't think that was stupid, but I mean, you definitely, uh, great, great, great guest choice this week. Really good job, Kevin. You did a great be, job. First the good thing it, you put, did in a while, but we basically put it on a T for the viewers. So <laughs> we, got, we got a show that if you haven't listened to Cass and Juice podcast, this, this is probably going to have to be your first one. And I think Calgary and Edmonton fans, both who are probably not huge fans of you and I, they're going to probably want to listen. They're going to want to listen to this and hear our perspective because I'll, we'll be honest. We're not going to pick a side, but we'll tell you what we like about both sides of this. Sound good? I like it. Let's go. So earlier this week, the uh, infamous Cassian to Chuck saga cast, right? And, and I, I saw it on TV live. I was watching the game and tons of debate, right? In the last week within the hockey world. And we talked earlier, uh, the code, right? And I, I hate the word, the code. I just don't like it. I just feel like it's a media coin phrase, right? So more the, the, the term I like more is the game within the game. And that's kind of the way that you and I played the game. And when we came up, that was kind of something that we learned from the guys before us, right? Bertuzzi, Jovanovski, Olin, Morrison. And those guys learned it from the guys before them, before them. And I think it dates back to kind of the Gordy Howe era. And then even just before that, just after World War II, right? If we're going to get deep about this and the, the game within the game, basically, we'll talk a little bit more specifics. But to me, it's like, it's, it's, it's a game where you're, it's physical, there's fighting, there's hitting, and you're trying to, to win the game. And, and, you know, guys get hurt and you're trying to hurt guys at times. But there's also a respect and an integrity to the game. And the game within the game, there's certain situations where that respect and integrity have to be highlighted. So this to Chuck hit, right? He throws two, hit, two hits on Cassian in the game. And it's the hit when the winger comes down from his spot and hits it's the It's the Rafi Torres hit. It's That's exactly. what it was. Exactly. Yeah. And the fact that the league's defending that and basically ran Rafi out of the fucking league because of those hits. And then to Chuck does it twice in one game. And, and to be honest, we all know what to Chuck's doing. He's trying to hurt him. Like he, he's coming down the boards and he wants to hurt him. And or, or throw a big hit to, to get a good response. Right. A hundred percent. Maybe not may, meaning to hit, to hurt him, but he's certainly meaning to blow him up. When, when a player's not suspecting a hit, engage with another player, and then you come down the wall, like <clears throat> you're going to hurt someone, right? But how about this? Calgary fans who's be, who've been booing me every time I touch the puck and boo Cass, I, li I like the hit. How about that? I actually like the hit. Um, I think it's, it's illegal now because of the suspensions that Rafi got and Steve Downey. So, like, the, it, for me, it's kind of confusing from the league perspective. Like, why didn't the league suspend him or at least look at it? But if I'm a teammate of Tuchuk, I love the hit. You got the big, tough 13 goals in the first, you know, 40-game winger of, of Edmonton, your rival two hours down the road, who is kind of their heart and soul guy, right? Like, Cassian's kind of the heart and soul guy of that team. And you lay him out twice in a row coming around the net, clean or not clean. I fucking love it if I'm a Calgary Flame, you know? Like, I do. Um, like I had no problem with Rafi's hits when, when I, we, when we were his teammates, I, but that's what I don't get about the league is the leagues not being fucking consistent at all. You say those hits are illegal and then it happens twice in one game. So, you know, I think that's where the confusion comes in and, um, 
But if the Chuck's going to play like that, he has to fight. Period. Like, yeah, but how you about hit the, the wrong guy, you're you're going to have to fight him. So we used to feed off of Rafi's hits. Remember the, yeah. when he hit Seabrook mm-hmm. behind the net and it was, you know, looking at it today, it was like the Scott Stevens hit on Korea and Lindros. Like big time late interference. And it was like a, a swing hit that like swinged all the momentum in the series. How about when he used to come down from the point once a game and just take a run at the guy, whether he got him or not. The guys down low, the Fords down low, trying to make their plays were like, like heads up that when that guy's on the ice. So like, it's it's a guy that you always had to keep your head up on the ice, right? When we played against him, we let you know Fords and Dino when he was on the ice, and when he played with us, he was a big part of that cup run that we went on because he did create so much energy with those hits. So then swing over to Cassian's perspective now, and the Edmonton Oilers fans, do you like the hit? No, if you're an Oilers fan, you're saying it's a it's a fucking dirty hit, right? Like the the mm-hmm. the, the league has outlawed these hits. It's a it's an unsuspecting player who's engaged in a battle. It's predatory. You know, that's the definition basically of what a predatory hit is or what targeting a player is. But I love Cassian's response, right? Like the first time he gets hit, he and his helmet goes flying off and he 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 gives him that <laughs> death look like who just fucking hit me and he's looking and he's like I want to kill him. But I also have to be a good teammate and I can't take a penalty. And he restrains himself. The second time he gets hit, he's like, I don't give a shit who hit me, what time of the game it is. Like, I'm looking for blood. And I absolutely loved what he did. I loved how he did it strategically. He didn't just swing right away and, and sucker punch him. Like, remember that Bowler East guy cross checked you right in the face? Like, didn't even give you a chance to, not that you would have, but they can even give you a chance to drop your gloves. Cassian grabs him and actually throws him around for a bit and gives him a chance to defend himself. And when he doesn't, Cassian's like, I'm just going to beat you into the ground then, which I yeah. love. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we both fought guys tougher than us. Um, I know I have. I know I've lost probably the majority of my fights, but, um, you know, you got you to gotta at least throw, right? <laughs> like, you can't just turtle like he did after you throw two... <clears throat> clean but dirty hits like if he's going to play like that and that's the problem with the game right now there's there's no accountability and there's no respect for for certain players and and uh you know i love that Cassini's receiving so much respect from and and uh i want to say congratulations from from other other players and gms and around the league but um you know i think everybody that knows the game of hockey thinks Cassian did what what Cassian did was right yeah and he'll tell you a little bit later but he has been getting some notes from guys across the league you know similar actually got same thing when I had the fight with Gudis and I got the best of him I had text messages from guys I've never even talked to in my life right just because of the way he played and the way to played right but I'm just thinking from to Chuck's standpoint you're right. Like you made a really good point. You and I have fought tougher guys than us. I've been sucked into fights just because of like what happened on the ice into fights that I didn't want to be in. And I knew I probably wasn't going to win. But at some point I defended myself, right? Like he's, he doesn't have to defend himself, but he's going to get hurt if he doesn't. That's what I, if I'm a Calgary fan, I'm like, at least like drop your gloves and grab them. You're a big, strong guy and just hold them tight. Like don't just take bombs off the head. Right. So like if this happens again, which yeah, it, good, will. it will, I hope it does. If I was to Chuck, I'd, I'd line up first face off and fight him. Uh, you have to, or it's just going to keep dragging on, keep dragging on. He's going to keep chasing you around and, and, the <laughs> and you know, he will happen again. And to be honest, I, I, I blame to Chuck for it. Um, if he would have just manned up and fought him right away, then all this would have been done and over with. But now it's going to be dragged out into the next game. And Cassian made a good point saying that they're in the same conference. Um, they're going to see him a lot. And, you know, Cassian's a guy that, I mean, he just did. He took a suspension on him. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did it again. Well, he's capable. But you know what? Again, Calgary fans, I don't, I don't really – I disagree a little bit. I don't really blame to Chuck because, like I said, I like the hits, clean or not clean. Um, and then when Cassian grabs you, yeah, I thought he maybe should have defended himself, but again, he's thinking 
And in his interviews, he's saying, you know, like it's not a good trade off. And first of all, that's just code for like, I'm going to lose the fight, right? That's what we would always say. Oh, it's not a good trade off. Well, yeah, because the guy's tougher than you. That's why it's not a good trade off. But I don't it's mind. Not like Cass is a fourth line player. Come on. The guy has 13 goals. He but plays he's, on a line. But he's tougher. David. He's tougher than to Chuck, for sure. Yeah, right? I get it. But at so the same he's, time, so that's, that's why, a big part of Edmonton. Like, that's the heart and soul guy. That's the guy you want to fight on Edmonton. Yeah. Because if you I do know. beat them up, that drains their team. You know what? Cass used to always fight Ryan Klo and Chris Stewart when he was in St. Louis. And he lost almost all those fights. And he's like, I love it because they all they both have 20 goals every year. They're both tough. He's like, that's a good trade-off. This trade-off's not a very it's not a bad trade-off. It's actually a pretty no. fair trade-off. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, the only difference is Cassian has a lot more fighting experience, right? And he's a lefty. Guys don't like fighting lefties. That's what it also comes down to is when you fight a lefty and you're a righty, you're going to get hit. So it's, both, it's way you, you can't I almost... Bogosian. Bogosian's a lefty and he beat the piss out of me. So, um, yeah, Left, fighting a lefty's hard. You just got to throw. Well, lefties are used to fighting righties. Mm-hmm. Righties are, aren't used to fighting lefties, right? And they're like, do I go toe-to-toe? Do I hold on? It's a little bit uncomfortable until you get the hang of it. Do you throw your left? <laughs> yeah, do you switch and throw your pillow lefts or yeah. do you just go toe to toe? Are you good enough at dodging punches, throwing, ducking, throwing, duck? Like it's a strategic fight against the lefty if you're a righty and you're not used mm-hmm. to it, right? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. So let's go to the media now. So like I said, I don't blame Tachuk, love the hit. I don't like how he didn't protect himself, but the media I don't like afterwards. what he said afterwards either. <laughs> I don't like what he said after, but at least he didn't complain about Cassian ragdolling him. It's not like he was sitting there like, oh, Cassian, like he's throwing me around. He shouldn't have. He like he took his lumps and he didn't really complain about it. He just said, I'll take the power play. Well, if that's the way you feel, fine. Great. If you want to take 18 punches to the head and then score on the power play, if that power play is that important to you, then great. But my point is, eventually, that's going to hurt. Those 18 punches to the head are going to hurt, right? But he didn't make any excuses about it. And then Cassian, we obviously love his media conference, right? He just calls it like it is. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I don't know if you saw James Neal's interview. I liked Who his interview. Who played too. with the Chuck last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super, super interesting. So, what was mm-hmm. his interview about? His interview was about just uh, the code and and basically how, uh, how it was a dirty hit. And he. <laughs> He uh, fucking hated what to Chuck said afterwards, something about the tracks or whatever. And uh, it was a good interview. And, and the way he kind of, well, he had castings back and, and obviously uh, he wasn't happy that to Chuck said that he was going to do it again, which to Chuck did say that, you know, if you had a chance to do it over again, would you? And he said, absolutely, which I'm fine with. If you want to play like oh, that, yeah. my only problem is, is I like players that play on the edge like that, but you got to stand up for yourself. Cassian is going to respond the exact same way. And he's already said it. He goes, I'll go right back at him again. And Battle of Alberta, it, I don't think it's been as fiery as this. And how long? Like when, like the Gretzky era? When has it been this fiery, this, this Battle of Alberta? It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's what hockey should be played like. Uh, I'm not saying guys should ragdoll each other, but, you know, to see a little, little physicality in games and, and especially in the Battle of Alberta that has that, you know, rivalry for so, so long. And it's, and uh, the history that those two teams have with each other, it's, it's, uh, it's being renewed with Cassian and to Chuck right now. These two guys are both considered power forwards, right? To me, what a power forward, like to me, not to what co- like the common person or the media, the power forward position to me, like the, the guys in the past that I would consider good power forwards were Aginla, Shanahan, Cam Neely, who was one of my favorites. And the thing that those guys all have in common is you, they could all score goals. They were all highly skilled players, but they also fought anybody. Lucic, they fought all comers, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's a heavyweight or whether it's a guy a little bit smaller than them. So Chuck is considered uh, a power forward in today's game, which is a little bit different than it was in the old, you know, 10 years ago. Cassian is also considered a power forward, maybe a little bit more of the old school way right so a lot of people are saying like to be a considered a power forward if you want to be like he's playing in calgary like you're you're in the shadow of again one of the greatest power forwards ever you, as you know Cass, you fought him yeah three times 
he half fought a dozen times. But he fought Surrey, he fought Hatcher, he fought guys tougher than him and bigger than him to defend himself and to give himself space. Yeah, he uh, he fought Kessler too. Don't remember. He forgot yeah. that part. He but. had a couple of good <laughs> goals with Kessler. Check it out on YouTube. Couple of, <laughs> and remember, after you're like, "Oh, I dummied him." <laughs> like, well, I, I didn't dummy. I, I again well, let him. <laughs> you, you used to tell me when I again let him. Oh my god. All no, right, with move on. Yeah, that's fine. That's enough of that, right? Yeah. So when you meet hockey players for the first time and you're an American that doesn't really know the sport, the first question you ask is, do you have all your teeth? You're looking at me like that, but that's what everyone asks me in the neighborhood that don't know anything about hockey. And you go, no, obviously not. <laughs> and, and then you, you try to explain to them, you know, like what, what it takes to be a hockey player is, yeah, your face is exposed and sometimes you get high sticked in the face or you get elbowed or you get punched and you lose your teeth. Right? So What's an incident that you've had? Because I've had a couple too. Uh, I've had a couple. Took a puck in the Nashville series, and and what people don't understand is, it's it's different on the road than at home because at home you have your own dentist, unless you're in playoffs and you bring your doctors and your dentist from at home. But when when you're on the road, you're relying on the other team's dentist, which sometimes they take their sweet ass time to get over there, and then usually. <laughs> You don't use any numbing medication because your adrenaline's already going and you just stitch you up as fast as possible and then send you back out there. The teeth, you don't even worry about. You don't cap them. So you get that fresh, you know, wind coming into your face and it burns your Ner- tooth. Nerve exposed, when, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the nerves, nerves exposed. And then, you know, there was a time in Chicago where we were playing the Blackhawks and uh, Andrew Ladd cross-checked me in the face. Um, shit, I want to say it was playoffs. It might have been regular season. It was just a dirty play. I was just turning the neutral zone, didn't have the puck, and he came in. I don't know if he saw me or not, but cross-checked me right across the face, took out like four teeth, and split me open, like wide open. Ref didn't call it. I go in, you know, get stitched up a bit, come back out, play the rest of the game, and when you're back there, you just want to get back out there right that's what hockey players do like you get cut you you lose a couple of teeth who cares like we got a power player or i want to get back and help the team so after the game i called mccoward um in the media (laughs) in the media uh which you know probably wasn't my best move but at the time you know you you know i was you're you're fired up fucking pissed i was you know it was dirty there was no call the refs like i didn't see it so but what I liked is Lad fought me in the next game, and yeah, I, I took another lump. He split me under my my eye, and, um, you know, but that's you know goes back to the last topic, the game within the game. Um, I think that's what's missing a little bit in, in today's game. But, um, with the teeth that I lost, you know, after the game, after the game when when this incident happened. I could stick my tongue all the way down at like below my chin. So they missed this whole, like, you know, where your gum attaches to your lip that was split open like two inches oh, and it was wow. just like leaking. So they had to do that after the game and, and, you know, now I'm fine, but I don't have that piece of gum that connects your, uh, your lip to your, your, uh, teeth. Is that why you look like that? Yeah. That's why I'm this fucking good looking. <laughs> So it's funny you say that about not having your own dentist on the road because I actually got split open in Belarus at the World Championships and I had the dentist there work on me and it, it wasn't my own personal dentist. And, it, and Where'd you get split open? I'll send a picture to uh, the, the the Instagram, but I just, it wasn't anything major, but it, I needed stitches inside and you made like five stitches inside, like inside my mouth, right? Like I was oh, bleeding. Okay. Where I, I, was, ended, I was I actually, going dark on that one. We're inside. What were you doing in Belarus? Oh, fuck. <laughs> but this time in LA when we were playing together, I remember at the start of the game, my first shift, I skid on the ice and I'm all ramped up and I sprint across and Trevor Lewis is trying to dump the puck in because he's a fourth liner and that's what he does. He hard rims it. Obviously. And I go, I go to hit him and he puts his elbow up and puts it right through my mouth, right? So I come off and I'm bleeding everywhere. I go into the locker room in LA. So their dentist walks down and 
they worked on me, you know, in, in LA in the dress room, like where the trainer's room is and you go mm-hmm. out that door into the hallway. They were yep. working on me back there. I so keep in mind, this is the first shift of the first period. And I came back halfway through the second period. So that's like 45 minutes of stitches. Like they said, I was a mess. I didn't look because I went right from the ice onto the table. I had stitches. I think I had 25 stitches inside and I had like 15 stitches outside. Right. So one of those things where like your, your lip is split and it, once you split your lip, it Oh, I remember that when you had that fat lip, remember? (laughs) And then, and then you come back and you play and then the rest of the game, you just got these big fat lips and everyone's like, I remember that. (laughs) And you're like, please don't touch me in a scrum. Just please don't face wash me. Uh, Your lip was like, four times the normal size i i get pictures of that in my head and i just start laughing (laughs) see and you get mad when i make fun of your your broken foot and you're sitting here doing the exact same thing you make fun of my nose every other fucking day so like let's let's say your nose is really big and sticks out but mine's big and flat so like we both have nose issues okay we're we're still models (laughs) obviously nose models so in Anaheim, uh, the, I've lost teeth twice. Once was from a, a Ben Eager stiff left that was back in a, a line brawl where I ended up having to fight him, who is, I think, a little bit outside of my weight class. And the second time, I took a high stick. I got high stuck by a Darnell <laughs> Nerd in Anaheim. And I remember I came off and the same thing, knocks my other tooth out, and I didn't wear a mouth guard for 12 years because I'm, I'm an idiot. Right. And mm-hmm. I never had a good explanation for my family or a visor. And again, no good explanation or reason. So I come to the, to the locker room and, and usually, you know, how you walk in Anaheim before you get to the dentist's office to bow to Grant's office, you stop in on the, at the bathroom and you look at yourself in the mirror. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I wonder what this one looks like. Same thing. Look at my lip split wide open. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, how is she going to put this together? Like I look like Beetlejuice, right? <laughs> So I walk down there and she's like, oh my God. And she's so good at it, right? Like that's why she, she's the best facial suture person in the world. In my she opinion. is good. And yeah. She, she put it together and you can't even see the line through the middle of my lip. And everything was split open. Tooth was out. And this is what she does. And she's, I think she's one of the best in the league. I've been to a bunch around the NHL. And she makes facial sutures just paper thin and disappear. But again, you're racing the clock. So when you go in to see her, She's like, okay, okay. And I'm like, hurry up, right? Like, let's go. Yeah. And she's like, do you want to take your equipment off? Do you want to take your upper body stuff yeah. off? I'm like, no. no, let's go, right? Like you could have a power play. So now you're down to 5D. If you're a defenseman, if you're a centerman, you're down to like three centers. So every hockey player across the board, I think would be like, let's go. Do this as fast as you can. And then we'll deal with the consequences later, right? No, I, yeah, I, I concur the i'm the same way um just get me out there get me out there um you know the one incident where we were playing on vancouver and and uh we were playing in dallas and i went laid down to block a shot this isn't mouth related but yuri letnin went to go jump above me and kicked my helmet off and split me for like 60 stitches in the back of my head and that's why i have that scar in the back of my head right now um that was that i've never seen so much blood in that and like the so, mouth produces a lot of blood. Like when you cut yourself in your mouth, you're just spitting blood for days. But like for the rest of the game, you're spitting blood, right? Like well, it right. doesn't stop. Dr. Kessler. Um, <laughs> that's, the mouth has a lot of blood. <laughs> Fuck no shit. <laughs> Jesus. I... Hey, <laughs> while you're, while once, you're thinking once, your comeback. Once, <laughs> once again, once again, the smartest guy in the fucking show. Just while ask, you're thinking of your comeback, okay. listen to this. We're talking about injuries, so I have this uh, this academy, and and the kids all listen to our podcast. They want me to give a shout out. West Coast Academy. I started down here in in California, and I have this kid yesterday. He's a 2006, right? Little tough defenseman, little guy, but plays like you would love this kid. Just plays with like a huge heart, mm-hmm. and he's playing a two on two drill, and he's skating across, and this one kid on his team shoots the puck, and he's going to go for the rebound and hits his own guy right in the hand, right? So like explodes his hand, his glove. He goes to the bench and he's just shaking his hand. And I'm like, okay, I've seen that. Like, I know what that is. I go over and you know when like your nail is like right away black Mm -hmm. and it's just so swollen. Like I think forwards, you guys get that way more than D because we slash you. And you know Mm -hmm. when your finger is so 
swollen and there's so much pressure, it kills, right? So yeah, you got to so, pop it too, right? You got to stick a needle in there. Yeah. So the kid's name is Caden Curry. Doesn't he's like, oh, it hurt. I'm like, it's a hurt. He goes, yeah. And he goes, so he sits on the bench for a bit. There's like 20 minutes left in practice. I'm like, just go off, bud. Like, we'll ice it. So he leaves. Uh, he gets changed. We go up to the classroom and he goes, coach, can you uh, put a pin through it? And I'm like, what? I go, I don't think I can do that. Like, I think that's something maybe your parents should do or like a, a, a doctor maybe at the clinic. So he's like, okay, okay. So he comes back and this kid's got like German mom, right? Like tough, yeah. mm -hmm. tough parents, right? He comes back today and I, I go, how's your finger? And he goes, oh, it's really good. My, uh, I don't know if he said his mom or his dad. They put the drill through it. They drilled through the kit and he shows me the hole and he's like, yeah, and the drill got stuck. And I go, what? So like the parent, one of the parents grabbed the drill and drilled a hole through the nail to relieve the pressure. And then the thing like got caught on something. This is a 13 year old boy. Like how tough is that? <laughs> That's a hockey player right there. And the that kid's is the biggest, player. he's the nicest kid ever too. And he's just so internally tough. Very rare to find kids like that. <laughs> not rare. michigan you don't find those kids in michigan oh yeah you do <clears throat> that kid must be from michigan no he moved for he all moved you to california for all you midwesterners that think that you guys are the toughest these california kids are pretty tough no we're the nicest we never said we were the toughest we're the nicest you're the nicest detroit yeah. people are nice oh yeah midwest people are nice you've never heard of that before Midwest people are very neighborly. You never, you've never heard that. No, I, ha I went to school in the Midwest and, and yes, they're nice, but Detroit is a, I, I remember we stayed at the Westin in Detroit cast. I went for a walk and before morning skate. Okay. That was like 10 years ago when you played. <laughs> I walk out the door and there's a bouncer at the Westin hotel. And he's like, well, yeah, obviously. you want to go that way, bud. And I go, it's 10 o'clock. It's daylight like i'm just going for a walk down this so that, i go down the street. honestly that was five years ago i was maybe chased six. back i was chased back because i went to the wrong bus stop <laughs> it's changed a lot down there detroit's nice now it is but there are shady parts you got to know where to go and obviously you didn't know where to go remember the story about andrew alberts going to joe lewis and the cab yeah. driver put him into the alley and, and then keith, uh him and keith ballard were in the cab yeah. going to joe lewis late they weren't playing you're right and he held the door shut when another guy like ran up on it. It was like an inside job. Yeah. Don't take keep, cabs in Detroit. In that mind, was before that was, Uber though. Well, it was a cab and it was a, like a two miles away. It was the, remember a hotel from yeah, Joe it Lewis. Wasn't. And you go down that long road on the water and the cab driver was a woman and she stopped. Uh, I tried to rip open the door and steal their luggage and stuff. And they were holding yeah. it shut and kicking <laughs> There's that separator from that the driver in the back seat, and they're kicking the thing like drive, drive, and she's like, "No, nope, get out, time to get out." And they're like, <laughs> "We're not going anywhere." Yeah, it's a lot city. better. Hey, great city now. None of that shit happens anymore. <laughs> Pure Michigan. Okay. So, Cass, you sent out that stupid tweet the other day trying to make fun of me oh, amazing. about something with the Bachelor. What, like, I've seen about? you pop champagne bottles before. You're not the you're not the best at it. But uh, okay. you guys already heard the story. I, my wife watches it. I, I, you know, sat down on the couch and, and started watching it. And I enjoy it. It's, it's uh, you know, is it manly to say you enjoy The Bachelor? You know, I think. Uh, Nothing wrong with that, ba The Bachelor. Yeah. I, from, I, a, from being manly. Yeah. The, manly. Well, with the tweet, I, I watched it 10 times. I was pissing myself laughing. Um, I've seen, I mean, shit, I've done that before where you take a, a drink out of a full champagne bottle and it just explodes in your face, but I've never had it on camera before. That was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, but obviously it's a, it's a house full of Instagram models that are catty. And, you know, I think the show plays it up to, uh, you know, have them fight all the time. And, and I don't, you know, to be honest, I mean, I, I, I heard because obviously, you know, people look on the internet and they know the ending already. And, and apparently they're going to do a, a live show f to pick between the two girls is what I heard, which oh, yeah. will be the and first time ever. Break one girl's heart, like live. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> just for our yeah. entertainment. Yeah. 
just break a girl's heart. I mean, they've been holding on for six months. That's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but that's, uh, I'm excited. I'm going to, I'll, uh, I'll do weekly updates. I love, I don't Please know don't. any of their names, names yet, but I'll, uh, I think the, the guy's name's Ben or something. Don't, don't learn know. the names and don't give us weekly updates, but how about answer this question? If, and you can't pick anybody that you know, personally, like you can't pick your wife. You can't pick my wife. You can't pick Burroughs, wife. But if you were a contestant on The Bachelorette, who would who would The Bachelorette be? Who would you want The Bachelorette to be? Like, let's think uh, outside the scope of your world, like people like that you don't really know, like uh, actresses like, and or a guy. Like, if it's if you prefer to be a guy, up to you. <laughs> well, seriously, it's whatever it is you 2020, like. Right? No, I would pick. Geez, you're gonna put me on the spot right now. Um, well, we can pause it for a second, give you 35 minutes to think about an answer. Yeah, well, I, I, I well fuck. Like, I, don't, I don't even know. I'm I mean, sure you got a bit of a list. Uh, what's, uh, I mean, I don't know their names. I know Pamela Anderson? Like. No, definitely not. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <Jesus>. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I, I mean, name All a couple right, names. Forget about it. No, forget no, about name it. a couple names. Um, I know it's tough to be put on the spot. Jennifer Aniston's got to be a, she, a she's classic not, name. I know uh, she's a little bit older than you and I, but she's just doesn't age. Here, I'm just looking at, at girls right <laughs> now. Looking, what do you want? Hinge? Going going through through the Rolodex of of Google. <laughs> Jessica Alba. Wow. There. That's I'm a big cool. fan. Yeah. Very good. Good, good, like not homely, but like natural beauty. Homely. Not uh, yeah. I said not homely. I was trying homely's to think of the word. Homely's no. ugly though. No, I get it, but not not to me. Homely is like more like not natural. To not to me. Just to the Webster's dictionary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to me. I wasn't. <laughs> you got your own definition for words. So to me and to like everyone else, I I'd think it smack means ugly. you in the back of the fucking head <laughs> if I could right now. If you weren't cross country, I I'd, I'd fucking tee off on you yeah but you can't because uh, you're in michigan right now while i'm in california c- correct exactly. I'm, I'm in michigan so uh wrap yeah it. I, wrap I, this shit up yeah. somehow yeah i i don't know yeah uh who'd i say jessica alba sweet okay so we'll look for look forward to never hearing about the bachelor again <laughs> well we can if you're up if you really feel strongly about updates let's do it no no i'm fine i probably won't even watch another episode no, you might get forced into it again, right? I might. You're right. And it's not so much force. It's boredom more than anything. Hey, do you not agree that every episode at some point, Kess and I should have like a banter where like we chirp each other? Don't you think? Kess is like, shut shut up. Like, you, like that, I love that. I think we should have that every episode, at least once. We have coming up Zach Cassian, probably one of the most popular players in the NHL right now. and And, uh, you know, really excited to talk to him and get his take on a couple of things that recently happened. Um, we all are going to say it's Juice's fault, but what do you think about that, Juice? I think that this guy has come a long way. We we play with him at a different point of his career and his mm-hmm. life, and something we're going to talk to him about is how he's kind of changed his life and turned it around. So to, to, to become the guy he is now on and off the ice, which I think is a, a pretty good story for everybody to hear. I actually agree with you for once. Um, he uh, he's come a long way since his days with the Canucks, um, on and off the ice, and and I'm happy for him. I just said that. You're a fucking <laughs> dick. You're listening to the Cass and Juice podcast. We're about to talk to probably the most popular guy in the NHL right now. If you don't live in Calgary, he's in his ninth season in the NHL. He came out of the OHL where he played for the Peterborough Peets and the Windsor Spitfires. It's a product of Windsor, Ontario. He was drafted in the first round, 13th overall to Buffalo in 2009. He's played for Buffalo. He's played with Kess and I in Van. And now he's just running amok in Edmonton. Zach Cassian, also known as the Big Cat. What's up, Big Cat? Thanks for having me, boys. I appreciate it. Cass, um, how's your week going, bud? Yeah, it's been uh, eventful, to say the least, for sure. I think... uh... Alberta's uh, buzzing right now, which is a good thing. It's good for hockey. 
So you got a couple more days off though, right? So we'll just quickly talk. I don't want to talk about this too much because I'm sure you're, you're sick of it, all the, uh, the interviews, but the, the little rivalry going on there, uh, the Alberta rivalry, just briefly talk about that. We all kind of know and Cass have, I, uh, have had our opinions. We've talked about it a little bit, but it's, it's steamy right now, right? And that's good for hockey, I think, and it's fun for you, no? Yeah, it's at the end of the day, people that have played the game or, or, or know anything about the game know it's, this is a fun time, right? Like uh, the way the game has evolved, there's not too many incidences like this anymore. And to get, obviously, the Battle of Alberta rejuvenated, obviously, the hits, we disagree. Um, and <laughs> that's the way it is. That's the way hockey is. It's, it's always, uh, one of those things where your team sides with you, right? It's uh, there's 10 people in a conversation. Five are going to be on my side. Five are going to be on this side. That's hockey. At the end of the day, um, it's created a rivalry. I'm sure um, it's going to be fun games against Calgary for, for not just one game, but for many years to come now, since this is spiced up a little bit. So basically because of you, you just made that rivalry so much more, and, and I think that game after the break, you play them first game, I believe, after All-Star. Yeah. Like, who's not going to watch that game, right? Exactly. Good TV ratings. Batman should give me a call. <laughs> like, I'd love to see the TV ratings. Like, this, is, <laughs> this, this is good. It's good for hockey. At the end of the day, they're a good team. We're a good team. We're fighting to get into the playoffs. And who doesn't like like this in hockey? It's It's been in the, the game for so long. I know, obviously, Kachuk's a good player, but uh, I felt that I was taken advantage of. and. Um, the good thing is, I think we play two times in the next three games or when we get back. So it's going to be fun. Obviously, there's nothing going to be dirty going on, but it's gonna it's gonna ramp up the game. It's gonna ramp up the intensity, and it's it's fun. Kess and Juice, you guys know, you guys thrived in these games as well. It's and they need more. They need more of it. You know, it's it's a fun big, game. To big play. boy hockey coming up, right? I love it. Yeah, it's fun. It's for sure fun. I'm excited. Hey, what's more fun when you uh, when you grab to chalk there, or when you fought me in an elevator at five in the morning? <laughs> uh, at, at level, do you remember that? Do you remember how that all unfolded no, I don't that rem- night? Because I don't remember. All three of us were actually there that night, and I'm sure we all have three different opinions of how it happened. I don't remember exactly, but <laughs> it, was funny. Started it was off. It was funny. It was, <laughs> a, it was a year end party, right? So we were at Cactus at the uh, the Olympic Cactus on the water in yeah. Cole Harbor. Yeah. And we're sitting there during the day. And we're having some drinks. All the guys are there, twins, all of us. Yeah. And as the night progressed, uh, you, me, Kess, and Tan Man, and a couple other guys were walking back. We we're walking you back to level at the end of the night. And it all started, I think it started with you and Cass. You pushed Cass, Cass pushed you, <laughs> slapped him in the face. And then I kind of got into it. Next thing you know, we're in the hotel lobby and you and I start fighting for real in the elevator. <laughs> and Frankie Corrado is trying to break oh, yeah. it up. Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody hit him and gave him a black eye. But anyways, you and I are fighting. And then all of a sudden, like I push you out of the elevator and the elevator goes up halfway and stops. So like I'm stuck in the elevator and you're outside and you're trying to jump up. And we're like giving it to each other verbally through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you just give up and you're like, I'm going home. So you go home. And then once the elevator comes down, like 15 minutes later, I go home. And then in the morning, my wife goes, Why was Cassian calling you all night? <laughs> so like I wake up, I listen to my messages, it's like, Juice, where are you? We gotta settle this. I'm on Granville right now. And we go to the rink in the morning for meetings and we see as soon as we see each other, we just start laughing and just you know, like probably hug, hugged or something. Is that ring a bell? Yeah, that's that's yeah, I was probably being an idiot, you know, when I drank, I was a little out of control. I probably said something stupid or <laughs> something of the wrong guy obviously you're not going to take too much shit i'd probably push you to your breaking point but you know what that's it just shows like that happens men fight every once in a while we came to the rink it was it wasn't a big deal right it's it is yeah. what it is we uh tried to settle it obviously i might be able i might be able to get you back now you're retired you probably gained some few few lbs you're probably, <laughs> you're probably a little no. out of shape right now i might be able to get no, you right no. now Lean, lean, work out. He kills the the Peloton every day. That's his new thing. Peloton, a couple times a day. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm shadow boxing in the mirror now. Nobody to fight. (laughs) It's actually considered illegal to fight people when you're not on the ice. Yeah, exactly. Maybe if we end up in an elevator one of these days, we'll try to try to settle it round two. (laughs) 
we'll we'll find each other. But uh, t- take this right, right into like your sobriety because I'm I'm very yeah. proud of you for how yeah. you've turned your life around and, and you got your ten month old daughter and you got your beautiful wife and take us through the sobriety thing because Nate Thompson got a little bit of uh you know of uh, his story shown in the media the last week and you have a very similar story and it's and it's impressive. Yeah, if you know what you guys helped you guys were the main source of helping me out in the beginning. You know, it's one of those things you guys were older. We, I went to Vancouver. It was an older team, right? And I think there was some warning signs that I could have uh, ruined my career. And you guys tried to step in and intervene multiple times. But one thing I've learned through this whole process of getting clean was you, the only way you're going to do it is if you want to do it yourself. You got to be willing to help yourself. And uh, sadly, you guys tried to help multiple times, but it took uh, ultimately uh, a car accident to, to hit my rock bottom and to really think about what I was doing and how it was affecting the people around me, not only my career, but my family and my friends and and my teammates. So you know what? You guys tried to put a stop to it. You guys tried to help the best way you could. And you planted the seed. There there wasn't there was days where I was thinking about what you guys said. You guys were two NHLers long, played a long time, two leaders of our team. Clearly you're you're not just gonna intervene for no reason, right? Both of you guys like to have a good time. There's clearly something with me that I would take it a little too far uh, every now and then. And obviously the incident in Montreal was uh, pretty humbling, right? You get traded. You don't think uh, anything's ever going to happen to you. You think you're going to play in the NHL for 20 years, no matter what you're just, you're a kid and you're, you're kind of uh, oblivious to, to what it is and what it takes to stay in the NHL for a long time. And um, after that accident, my world came crumbling down. There's no, easy way to put it right here I broke down I've I cried a couple times like I didn't think I was going to get back to the NHL to be honest um you guys know I I I striked out with Buffalo Vancouver didn't want me my last chance was in Montreal uh and I screwed that one up before the season even started so that was really uh a turning point and right then and there I knew something was wrong and I had to I had to get better and I surrendered and that day uh, it changed my life. Essentially me and my brother joke around, like <laughs> you guys know me. I like to joke around, goof around. Like when I go back to Montreal, <laughs> I want to go dig up that tree that got hit, that the girl had driving and, <laughs> and, and planted in my backyard. Cause essentially that's what <laughs> changed my life. And uh, I'm back in the NHL now. Peter Shirelli gave me an opportunity to come back. I promised him I'd, I'd do everything I possibly could off the ice to, to, to stay clean and get better. And, um, if you guys know, it wasn't so much on ice with me. It was a lot of off ice. That was uh, a lot of warning signs for many teams and many people. So, um, changed my life. And obviously, like you, you mentioned juice, I, I have a 10 month year old, you guys have kids. It's life changing. Um, until you have a kid, awesome, you, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> until you have a kid, you don't realize, um, mm-hmm. you realize that life isn't about you anymore. You know, you're, when I was young, I was very selfish and, uh, hurt a lot of people, but to have my daughter, it was pretty cool to, uh, to see how your mind changes drastically. As soon as the first time you hold her, right. It's, it's pretty surreal. And, um, to have her in my life, uh, it's pretty cool. Obviously my wife, well, how was, how's that been like the support system? Like Mike, you talked about your brother, Mike jr. And, and Cass and, and your daughter, like that's, that's a big part of, of helping you through the process, right? Oh, for sure. My brother. Yeah. My brother is, phenomenal you know what he's uh basically my father he's been there from day one he's stuck by my side you guys know if 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 tragedies like that happen to you in your life it's amazing how many people don't want anything to do with you right it's amazing you really see you really see your true friends and when you're an athlete and you're young and you have money everyone wants to hang out with you right and then something bad like that happens and you really see who sticks by your side and my brother was the first one my mom obviously my siblings but then my wife, like you guys met Cassandra, she's a saint. And then she put up with so much shit for so many years. And, uh, for her to stick around, obviously, um, I'm a lucky guy. And then to have the baby with her, uh, my daughter is pretty special. And then life's rolling pretty good right now, man. It's, uh, it's fun. Uh, I wish I would have figured it out at a younger age. Um, but Hey, sometimes uh, you got to take a different path. Exactly. Like you said, buddy, uh, like I'm super proud of you. Um, you know, 
when you went to Edmonton and, and, you know, I, I don't even know if you know how big a part of that team you are. Like they're lucky to have you. Um, there's not many guys in the league that play your style and what you did to Chuck. Uh, I loved it. I thought you stuck up for yourself. I, you know, we talked about it a lot about it's basically the Rafi Torres hit that's out of the game now. And, yeah. and you know, for you to stick up, um, for yourself and, and to be honest, um, for, for you to um, play like that, and to be honest, you you, you uh, protect McDavid and Dreisaitl. And, and how is it playing with those two, by the way? Oh, geez. Next level, man. It's, uh, you know, like, <laughs> Stupid, right? <laughs> it's like there's superstars in the league, and these guys are on a whole other planet, man. And the maturity they have at such a young age, and the fact that Dreisaitl's 24, what's Connor, 23, it's – it's crazy to think how good these guys are actually going to get because they haven't even hit their ceiling. They're still, they're still young. You guys know. You guys were yeah, in the league at exactly. 23, and how'd you feel when you were 28? You know, like these guys are going to be breaking records left and right. And the cool thing about it is, like, I had the privilege to play with you. You guys were were awesome, but then the the twins, right? Like, they were awesome people. And Connor and Leon are very similar. They're good people. They they care about the team. They they want to win. And they're, they're great guys off the ice, which honestly, um, if you have that much talent and you're a good person, man, hats off to them, man. Uh, Edmonton's, Edmonton doesn't realize how lucky they are to have those two superstars, man. <laughs> they, they really don't. So what about like, so your role has changed, right? Since we played with you, you you're a young guy coming in. Now you're like, you're a 20, you're turning 29 soon in a couple of days. Like you're, you're a veteran, you're a leader, you're in your ninth season. So how has that been for you being like in a leadership role? Like, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy it. I, I'm not, I just like to have fun, man, with the stuff I went through in my life. Like, I, I don't like to preach what I went through. If people ask me, I try to show them guidance. But at the end of the day, I just try to show up and, and try to lead by example. I try to stay in good shape. I try to compete every day in practice. I try to compete hard in games. And that's what, that's what I try to do to be a leader. I, I'm, not, I'm not yelling at guys. I, if someone steps out of line, you might have to. But I think my situation, the stuff I went through off the ice, that's something personal. Um, obviously, if people want to ask and people want to know about it, I tell them, but I don't use that as a crutch by any means. Uh, I feel like I've played with some great players along the way. You two, you two are, are two of them. Uh, with the Twins, uh, even in, in Bo- uh, Buffalo, played with some really great players. And I think when you're young, you just – all the good players you play with, you're like a sponge, right? You see what they're doing. You see what they're doing. You see what they're doing. And then as you get older, you try to just be that person that those guys were for you. And I think that's just hockey players. You try to give the young guys what the older guys gave you when you were young. So it's just one, it's a, it's a full circle kind of deal. And we have a younger team in Edmonton. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with uh, being the older guy. Obviously I still feel like I'm a kid, but, um, at the same time, it's, it's good. It's nice being in a, in a little leadership role and, uh, guiding some kids if they need it. That's a okay. great, great way to put it. Sorry, Cass, to cut you off. I, I just think it's a great way to put it. Cause when you're talking about being a leader, it's, you're right. It's not about sitting at the, at the front of the room and yelling at everybody. It's about, it could be something as simple as coming at the rink in a good mood every day. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, like working hard, like keeping a light, you know, reminding guys guys we're in the nhl like this is the best league in the world let's have fun and work our asses off and win some games and like i remember you're uh and i, I want to ask you about this do you still do the same pre-game warm-up oh where you put on I the te- to ask them that's what you i was put just on the techno oh. techno music and then you just dance around for 15 minutes and you're leaking everywhere and then you're like <laughs> high jumping over obstacles in the dressing room like, no it's not like- no i don't do that anymore i used to i not, not anymore it's, uh, I loved it, Cass. Yeah. That's one of my favorite memories of, of <laughs> you in the locker room hanging, hanging off, off where you put the skates on the top of the shelves, and you're just yeah. hanging there, head bobbing, jumping around. Yeah, I, we had a video, and I don't know where that video went, but I piss myself laughing every time I think about it. You're just bouncing around, and, and I mean that's what we we needed at that time, right? You were that guy for us, where you brought that energy and that laugh, laughter and you kept it, you know, you kept it loose around the room and, and me, you and Tom Sestito would just die laughing before every game. <laughs> Stop and Tom. I miss that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, I don't do those warmups anymore, but those were, yeah, I remember those. Those were good. Those were good. 
I think I tired myself out though. Like I, <laughs> that was, yeah. If I would have saved some energy, who knows what could happen with that? Yeah. I don't do those what anymore, about, but I do. Uh, remember. What about your boy, uh, Luke Wilson? Let's talk about him a little. Cause the Seahawks just got beat out. He's your boy. You guys trained together. Yeah. He had a good, good season again. What's yeah. that relationship like? Luke's awesome. You know what? He's all over in the summer. He's all over. He's training with different guys. He's, He's dialed in. Like he, he always wants the best for him. He actually opened up a gym in Windsor, um, partnered, partnered with a few people, um, and actually gave Windsor finally its first true athletic gym where you can go in, you can crank the music, and you can lift some weights, and you can scream and holler, and you don't have to worry about the sixty-year-old working out next to you yelling at you. You know what I mean? That's where it was in Windsor. So that's calling our producer. <laughs> yeah. He's a six year old grumpy yeah. guy next to you. Hey, like turn down that music. There's nothing against people like that. But at the end of the day, athletes, we're on a different level. You guys know you guys trained and it's nice to have a facility where you can go in and you can put some work in. You, you can crank some rock tunes or whatever you want and get some work. So I thank him a ton for doing that, but we get together every once in a while. Obviously he's a busy guy and with me, I'm pretty busy, but um through everything and through the years and through since we played together in minor hockey and then on uh we were in high school together we still keep track it's a friend i definitely uh stay in touch with and i'm happy to see he's doing well what about that one time when um that matt cassian reached out to you and he said hey remember people were calling you the cassassin yeah and he yeah <laughs> i know i remember that and he <laughs> and he branded her what did he do he had it trademarked cassassin people were calling me cassassin and he was pissed, I guess, because he had it like trademarked in his name or something. And I was like, hey, man, it's all right. It's just a nickname. I'm not taking anything serious here from you. But yeah. Didn't he call you and said, uh, like, he, he actually helps manage my money now. Oh, and really? He, uh, yeah. So I haven't talked to him about it, but I remember you saying something like, he called you and he's like, hey, man, like, this is my nickname. And you're like, bro, like, take it. Like, yeah. I, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, hey, uh, yeah, I know. We, well, that guy always had a bone with me. Remember he played in Minnesota when I played in Vancouver and he lined up, he lines up with me and just right away he slashed me and says, let's see you the tougher Cassian is. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, man, I'm 20, <laughs> I'm 22 and this guy's heavy. And I'm like, whoa, like relax a little bit here. Thank God he left me alone after that. I wasn't sure if he was screwing around, but I wasn't hanging around to see if he was. What about your buddy, Patty Maroon? That just brought me up. Like, uh, you guys, you didn't play, you used to remember when we played with you, you hated the guy. Yeah. Right? yeah like yeah. every day, <laughs> you're at warm up, skating the red line. Like, we're going tonight. Maroon, we're going. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I don't fight. I don't fight lefties. And <laughs> yeah. then you guys played together. Yeah. And then, didn't he used to make fun of him? Like, on Twitter or something? You guys made fun of him that one time? <laughs> yeah. And then his, his, yeah. His, I was on his, Anaheim. His fiance. Oh, yeah. His fiance would fire back at me, but that's a good story. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? They're two awesome people. Like my wife and They're and his wife are really yeah. fun, like really close. And me and Patty talk weekly. We're we're good buddies. He came down to Windsor this summer. But yeah, it just shows you hockey. Some of us are different breeds, man. He was being a little rat out there, slashing guys and just being <laughs> Patty Maroon. You know what I mean? What he's good at, and finally enough's enough. And we took it to center ice. But yeah, I was happy to see no one get hurt, but. <laughs> He's a big, strong guy. That was, uh, that was the same with me and him. Like we fought before I, we played together. And then when we played together, like for the one year, it was great. And like Fran and, and Katie become good friends too. Right. Yeah. And then when he leaves and goes to Edmonton, I lined up with him and he goes, and he asked me like in the nicest possible. Way, I remember that fight. Something? I remember that. Yeah. Like, uh, like, can you, do you think you could give me a fight? And I'm like, what? And like Fran's in the stands in Anaheim and Katie's, they're probably in the same <laughs> action. Yeah. And I go, are you asking me to fight? He goes, well, like we kind of need one. I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Bud. And he goes, well, yeah. you don't have to, if you don't want to. And I go, yeah. if you're asking, me, the answer is yes. Yeah. Like we can be friends after, but if you're actually at challenging me, yeah. the answer is not going to be no. So yeah. then, so that he, do you remember? Like he wouldn't drop his gloves. He went to the net laughing yeah. and he tried to score. And then he's like, okay, let's fight after he yeah. scores a goal. That's I, Patty. In I remember <laughs> his, his, his fiance texts me after we fought. And was like, you got him when he was tired <laughs> and chirping me. And I was like, this is outrageous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is outrageous, you know? But they're funny. They're awesome people. But that just shows you yeah, the game yeah. within the game. Like, we played against you guys in Anaheim. Like, I think our whole team wanted to kill Kess at one point in the playoffs. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, if you want to kill someone, that means they're doing something right. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the way it is.
what's uh, the plan for the week? You got All Star break. You probably, I think, you have five days off, right? You guys going anywhere? Relaxing? Yeah, no. You know what? We're just going back to Windsor. It's tough with the little one right now, and I have a bunch of family that wants to see her and catch up with her. So we have some nice. stuff to do around. Yeah, so we're just going to go back to to Windsor and and hang out. Not much boring. No, that's great. That's what you got to do, right? You need to rest that big body. You're you're turning 29 in a couple of days. You're a UFA coming up in the summer. <laughs> Ness and I, we actually ne- make the big on. bucks. Yeah, like you, you should be making some big money for a long time in Edmonton. So I, sounds like you want to stay. Yeah, and definitely. They they need you there. So my forecast is like a five or six year deal north of a little bit north of four, in my opinion. Right. That's where you're. That's where you're going. Keep it up, buddy. We're super, super proud of you. Thanks for talking to us. And yeah, I think thanks, everybody boys. in the hockey world will be watching that that Edmonton Calgary game and hoping, not hoping stuff happens, but hoping it's a well, good stuff. Stuff's gonna happen. Game. Stuff will probably happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say it, but like everyone's hoping something. Yeah, happens. it's like it's not people. It's crazy how people think, right? They think it's gonna be dirty. It's just hockey. Chances are, big Maybe Luch like, is gonna come over, and you know what? It's, if something has to Another happen. Another guy who you played with and is a buddy or yeah, right? if something has to happen, yeah. it has to happen. You know, but it's going to be fun. It's good for the game and it's good for Alberta. So yeah, it's good to get a little old time hockey. Yeah, great, great talk with you. Good luck the rest of the season. We'll we'll talk again soon. But uh, appreciate you coming on. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for having me, fellas. Appreciate it. Episode seven in the books, Cass and. That was a, that was a good one. So just uh, reminding the people again, they know, right, Kess? Like Kess and oh, yeah. mom, subscribe, right? Become a regular. Like we need to uh, rely on you, and you rely on us, and we're we're getting better at this thing, and we're having a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Kess's Twitter handle Ryan underscore Kessler. He's a comedian now on Twitter. He's starting to use it a lot more. <laughs> right? I'm came Not as good as you, but. Well, you know what? When we first started doing the Twitter and you got me into it, um, we were we would just go back and forth at each other. All of our posts yeah. were just bickering with burrows and I think fans like that stuff. So Yeah. We'll keep it light. You know what else we uh, I'd like to mention is uh, keep coming at us with the comments and the mentions mm-hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna do a better job of reading those, especially for the Kess and Juice Twitter handle. And we'll respond to a bunch of questions if, if we got any, yeah. you know, really good questions that aren't stupid that we can actually talk about. <laughs> we should respond we'll, on the show, oh, like the last segment. We'll uh, we'll answer things live. Good idea. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good week. See you guys.